And without this last 0.5 habit, I don't think the previous seven habits have been that beneficial for me. Hey everyone, my name is Eugene and I help you lead a more fulfilling and intentional life. I recently saw a lot of boomers saying like, oh, they regret not doing these habits when they were much younger. And I thought from a Gen Z or almost a Gen Z to the next Gen Z generation, what are some of the habits that I'm really grateful for starting in my 20s? Please, please, please start. If you have not started investing today, I really urge you to start investing right now. I started a few years ago and as of 7th of August, my investments are still up and the market is doing terribly. I'm going to break down the charts for you between saving and investing. If you don't invest your money and you save $100 every month for the next 40 years, you're only going to get $48,000. But if you invest $100 per month for the next 40 years, you're going to get at least $200,000. So the difference is huge between saving and investing. That's why I really urge everyone to start investing your money because it's really important to invest in your own retirement. The second habit that I do is that I invest in myself. I know some of you are too worried to invest. So instead of investing in paper or in houses that we cannot afford, what if we invest in ourselves? That meant signing up for classes and really growing yourself. But then what kind of classes should you start signing up? I always believe that you should sign up for things that you are genuinely interested in. Instead of signing up classes that other people are doing, or even your peers might be pressuring you to do it. If let's say I force you to sign up for something that you don't want to do, it's very hard for you to get through. And all of these skills are actually compounded. So the longer you go for, the better your skills are going to be. But if you're not interested, you're going to quit halfway. There are also soft skills that you need to develop. These are the top 10 skills from the World Economic Forum. These skills are important because they're not specific to any industry and they are really transferable from workplace to another workplace. And no, you don't need to have all 10 of them right now. All you need to do is to develop them slowly and you'll grow them over time. There is a hard skill and a soft skill. The soft skills talks about creativity and logical thinking, problem solving. So how do you acquire these soft skills? Well, that comes in in the hard skills. If you learn coding, you're actually learning logical thinking. When you're learning graphic design, you're actually learning creativity. So you see how these hard skills and soft skills really correlate to each other. Think of a skill like an apple tree. You need to constantly water them and only five years later, you'll get the fruits of your labor. For sure, all these hard skills and soft skills doesn't come in one day. And all you need to do is to develop them slowly and progressively. And one day you'll achieve the mastery of these skills. The third habit that I have is that I understood the value of money and time. When you understand the value of money, you think about questions like, would you be willing to do a job for three hours or would you rather hire someone else for $60? Would you rather wait for five hours and save $50? And the question that ties in these questions are, what is your per hour rate? The answer varies from person to person. And talking about skills just now, it really depends on what skills you have. So for example, at the start, when you are a graphic designer, your per hour rate might be lower. But as you become one of the better and more famous graphic designers, your per hour rate will increase significantly. So would you wait five hours to save $50? Probably not. That's also the value of time. Say you're buying this pair of shoes for $200 and your per hour rate is $50. Are you willing to swap four hours of your time? I'm not asking you not to spend anything anymore. But all I'm asking is that, would you be willing to swap hours? Hours that you are going to put in to buying something that you want and it really makes you think about everything before you start purchasing things but all I need you to understand is that are you spending things on what you want or are you spending things on what you need the next habit that I have is really tiny and it's flossing in the past I don't see a point but it changed eight months ago I was visiting my dentist and once I opened my mouth my dentist said I have a series of problems it doesn't sound serious but it's actually going into my gum I always thought I have good dental health my teeth are always white so I started flossing do you remember the sharp feeling that you have after cleaning out your teeth? Yeah, I'm still having that feeling eight months after visiting the dentist. You're never too young to start worrying about your dental health. It's never too late to start flossing and you should start right now. Talking about dental health, the next habit that I have is that I work out consistently. Having good fitness or doing sports develop you more than just physical health, but also in mental health as well. The first thing is that it builds resilience. You know the saying, when the goings get tough, the tough gets going. So for those people who are running 10K, it takes a lot of resilience for you to do that 10K on its own. So it requires both mental and physical strength to complete it. Talking about jogging, I think sports also teach you how to pace yourself. Pacing yourself is important because going hard is great, but you become breathless really quickly. Working out helps you break goals into a smaller digestible chunk. And because of that, it's much easier for you to be goal focused and look at your goals and achieve them. You'll feel an immediate sense of achievement once you can complete. On a side note, working 
out also makes you feel great and you become more confident of who you are. And talking about confidence, connecting sincerely with someone else is my next habit that I have. I think it is important to connect with someone sincerely, especially in your 20s, because that's when you meet all kinds of different people. I personally don't believe in networking because I feel like they are fleeting and they are transactional, that I'm not connecting with that person at all. So you should definitely connect with that person in the long run to really keep the relationship going on forward. So what I do is I ask genuine questions to be interested in their life. That's how I connect with someone really sincerely and really personally. But being sincere, being authentic and being yourself is the key to connecting someone sincerely. The next habit that I acquire is that I have a habit of going to see a mental health professional. Authenticity and vulnerability is something that is very hard to elicit from everyone else and even for yourself. In the past, I was so hyper-focused on my academics and nothing else. For me, mental health is health and going back to those dark places are not great at all. There are times that we spiral, there are times that we don't understand our situation very well, and there are times that we have thoughts over here that are rotting as well. I talk to my counselor regularly about once a week. I talk about things in the past and in the future as well. And every time I go to to therapy, I feel like I understand myself a lot better. Counseling and therapy does not come in cheap, but I think of it as an investment for my health. If you spend money on eating healthier and working out, why not spend money to be healthier in the mind as well? And counseling helped me grow my last habit, which is having a growth mindset. Well, I'll not say exactly it's a habit, but having a growth mindset helps me build better habits in the future too. I say helpful words to myself. I personally stop chasing perfection. I believe in the 80-20 rule. It really helps me balance out between my mental and physical health as well. So how do you start having this growth mindset? I always start with this three Three phrases. I kept telling myself, constructive feedback is good. I try my best. It's okay to make mistakes and fail and there are definitely more things that I said to myself without me realizing it. But having a growth mindset really helped you subconsciously in your mental, your physical health and also you to build better habits in the future. I'm really grateful that I started this 7.5 habits early on. Age is not a number. I think what's more important here is your willingness to learn. Remember, change is not a destination but a direction that you're going to work towards too. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you again soon. Bye.